Okay, we've got some chicks coming today. Uh, these are gonna be broilers, which are our meat birds. We've gotta set these brooders up, get them ready. Um, we've also got some kind of colder, wet weather coming, so I'll run you through how we set up our brooder, which um, could be used at your home if you wanna set up a brooder for uh, chicks. One of the things that we love using for our brooders are these uh, troughs. These are two foot tall, uh, six foot across. Um, the main reason is we can move these anywhere we want. Um, as we start running more and more birds, we will probably have more of a permanent solution. Uh, but for now, having these small troughs, um, we can kind of put them anywhere we want. Right now we're on the back of the shop because it's nice and uh, out of the wind. And we'll set up some heat lamps. I'll show you all that. But um, this is a great, you know, option if you're just in your backyard and you want to have some chicks come through the mail. Uh, you don't even need a, a, a trough this big. You can get a smaller trough if you're just getting a handful of chicks. Um, but great solution. So it's a very temporary solution. And then you can, you know, it's multi, uh, has multi uses. You could use this as an actual trough later, or we've even filled it during the summer for a, a swimming pool. Um, so multiple uses, which I love also, um, and it's not permanent, so you can move it around. We've had issues in the past with using the, like the more coarser cut ones or the thicker ones with just the birds getting traction and kind of almost getting lost in the fluff, if you will. But with these finer ones, they pack down real nice. And I'll, um, I'll spread all these out and kind of smooth them out and you'll see it's a nice kind of finished surface. So then I'll just kind of walk around and it'll um, smooth it out. This particular trough kind of flew off a trailer on the highway. So it's not the flattest thing on the bottom, but it'll work. Okay, so we got the shavings and the brooders here. Um, we're getting 115 chicks that will split somewhat evenly in, uh, you know, in the two troughs. But this is, one of the cool things is this is totally scalable. Whether you're getting one chick from the feed store or you're ordering, you know, five or ten online. Um, and this is, it's the same across the board, whether it's meat chickens, uh, some dual breeds, uh, layers, you know, whatever the, the chicken it is, or even a duck. Um, it's all basically the same. So if you were to pick up just say one chick from the feed store, it's, it's all the same application. It would just be smaller. So pretty easy. So your baby chicks, when you receive them, they've never had water or any kind of food. Uh, so the first thing you always want to make sure is they have plenty of fresh, clean water. Um, I like this system. It has the like a tube here with these little nipples on the bottom. I found that this works the best for us and it keeps the water the cleanest. There's just a ton of different options when it comes to water. The number one kind of takeaway is Make sure they have plenty of water and clean water. So if you get one of those kind of like bell-shaped watering kind of deals, you just have to clean it out often. Or something like this, we don't clean it out, but maybe once a week or something, you know, if there's leaves or something like that in there. Um, but very simple. So once I get the birds in here, I'll show you how they can, um, they almost naturally just drink off these little, the nipples. They see that red and they kind of, pack after it and then the water starts dripping down. If you've been enjoying this video so far, give us a, a thumbs up or subscribe. We'd appreciate that. And if you want to get a real good laugh, we have our very first YouTube video was setting up a brooder and that can be seen here. It's uh, it's a good laugh. Check it out. So we got the brooder set up just in time. The post office called and our chicks are here. So we're gonna head down there and pick them up. Okay, so we got the chicks. We just got them from the post office. I'm gonna fill up their feeders. Um, we get these long kind of tray type feeders. 
Um, for these guys, I'm just going to do halfway full or somewhat halfway. And then uh, we always sprinkle in the grit. And this is that fine grit it's for, uh, for chicks or young birds. And that just helps them uh, break down the food better so they can digest it better. We do it halfway like that, just so halfway through this little trough, they, they hit the grit again, just so they kind of keep consuming it. That's one thing that we've learned in the past is you always want to make sure they have plenty of grit. And we found uh, it's been pretty good if you mix it in with their feed rather than putting it in like a separate kind of dish. So I'll sprinkle some of that on there. We've got their water set up, their food. And uh, these, these type of little troughs, they come with lids. And with this Cornish cross, we want them to eat as much food as possible. Here's that lid and they just slide on. These are great for little chicks if you get like a, a few layers from the feed store. But with these Cornish cross, what I was saying is you want them to eat as much food as possible and gain as much weight as fast as possible. So with this little lid, it actually restricts them and they won't eat all the feed out of that little trough. Um, so for the Cornish cross, we take it off, but um, if you're just gonna do some layers, it'd be perfectly fine. So this kind of water that we're doing, I'll get it adjusted so it's at the right height. Um, you've seen a lot of people with the smaller like bell waters, they'll put each of the bird's beaks in the water just to show it um, kind of where the water is. You can do that. Um, you don't have to do every one. You could do just a handful and those ones that learn where the water's at kind of teach the other ones. Um, there's something about these little red nipples that they'll actually peck at the red and they kind of figure it out on their own. Um, if you've ever seen any like huge commercial kind of ranch or chicken farm rather They don't teach them to drink. They just kind of throw like literally throw them out there um, But we'll make sure that they're all drinking and they're all happy in here. So we've had um, quite a Quite a few different kind of brooders in the past. We're finding a lot of success with these big round ones so we put um, 60 roughly 60 in each of these again. These are two foot tall. Um, the height only really matters when they get like about three weeks because they'll actually start jumping out. So this is a decent height for us. Um, it's six foot across. So there's about 60 in here. You could probably do some crazy math with the square root of pi or something like that. But um, so I don't know what the square footage is exactly, but you can see they have plenty of room. And these little Cornish crosses are gonna get big really fast. They're only gonna stay three weeks in here um, but they'll get big and if there's too many in a small area they'll start suffocating and sitting on each other it's just it's bad news all around um, and another key thing about these troughs is they're round so there's no corner to get stuck in which is really nice um, and later we'll set up the lights and you want to make sure they're at a good you know 90 degrees or so and that there's plenty of heat lamps and heat lights to um, allow them to spread out enough that they're not piled up, but also that they have room to get out if they want to get out of the light. You wouldn't want heat lamps covering this whole, this whole brooder because there's nowhere for them to get out of the heat if they needed to. But some breakfast tacos just showed up, so let me go take care of that and then we'll be back to set up the heat lamps. Okay, we got their heat lamps all set up. We've put ours out in the middle. Um, this way they're not all piled up in a corner. Um, and that was like, again, I was saying, a nice thing about these round troughs is there are no like edges or corners. But if I was to put this heat lamp over here, which would be nice and easy to clamp on the side, they would all pile up and actually smush each other against the side, which is not good. Um, so we put this board across and attached it to that board. And you can already see some are enjoying that nice heat coming out of that lamp. Okay, we're all finished up. We've got the, uh, the food in there, the water, the heat lamps, the bedding. A few key kind of takeaways here is 
We want to keep these birds dry, out of the wind, out of the rain, out of any kind of weather really, um, and keep these heat lamps on to keep them nice and warm. We are actually outside covered, so we're not going to get rained on. This big shop building here is going to block us from the wind. Um, their brooder, the trough, is going to block from the wind also. Since we are outside, we're going to put these uh, like hog panels over the top just so you know any predators don't go in there or other chickens, things like that. Um, but we're all set. They started drinking, they started eating, um, and now we just kind of watch them grow. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Uh, let me know if you're going to set up a brooder. Um, maybe you're, you have kind of a different style. Let me know. I'd love to hear. I'd love to learn from you. And thanks for watching.